Hi everybody, this is the first instalment of our little series Martin's Guitar Stories and the first instrument I'm going to feature is my 2004 National Resophonic Style O Deluxe and this guitar has made it possible for me to be a professional musician. It shaped my entire life, my entire career. Um, let's find out why. So, um, the first part of the story is how I came to own this guitar. I had wanted to be a professional musician since, since the age of about 14 or 15. I realised that's what I wanted to do. And I didn't achieve that until I was 30. So what I, through my late 20s, I was bucking gigs, I was trying to get stuff off the ground. And um, there came a point where I, I realised that the, my gigging money was equal to my day job money. So I handed my notice in at the day job. And the, the plan was I'd saved up for a while. I had enough money to survive for about four or five months. So if it all went wrong, when you cast the ship out there, out to sea, if it all went wrong... I'd survive and probably have to like think again. Let's just give it up and do something else. Um, the thing that inspired me, I had a picture of um, Blind Boy Fuller on my desk. So every day I get up and I start work and I try and book gigs and find any money, 20 pound gigs, 30, 40 pound, you know, 50, 60 dollar gigs, anything I could get my hands on just to try and keep the money coming in and surviving and, you know, make contacts. Uh, well, the inspiration was that if it all went well, I would treat myself to a resonator guitar. I'd always loved them, loved the music made on them. I never had one, barely played any. But that, that Blind Boy Fuller picture was my inspiration. So I, um, and I thought it would take years, but I was happy with that. Well, after about six months of being full time, I, ha you know, my buffer of money in the bank had gone up. And there was enough money to buy a resonator on top of the buffer. So I started looking round, and if you are in Britain now, it's kind of easier to, to find resonators if you know where to look. But at the time, I'd look on eBay and sh ask shops, and I've, I spent months not struggling to find a resonator I could afford. I could find very expensive vintage ones that were maybe a bit overpriced, and I just wanted something that was affordable with the money I had. So I struggled to find one, and then, anyway, I googled resonator for sale uk and the michael messer forum came up which is the world's probably best place for resonators and information and um there's a there's a, a section on that forum for people to buy and sell instruments in particular resonators so i put a post up anybody got a resonator for sale looking to buy and within a, a couple of hours, I had a reply from a lovely man called Charles Shepherd, who lives in Hull, which is about an hour and a half away from where I am in Leeds now. And he said, I'm coming to Leeds next week. My son's going to the uh, skate park. I'm taking him. Shall I bring it? And we'll have a look. So I met him in a restaurant that I had a um, residency in, a place called Sam's Chop House. And we met and we talked this very wet day. And he told me a great story about this guitar. He called it Chloe because... When he was a student in, I think, the 70s or the 80s, he'd um, worked, like, loading in at the student union, and he collected a load of p concert posters after the gigs. He had a big pile of status quo posters because he loved status quo, and they'd been gigging there. And um, he sold the status quo posters, and the money he raised allowed him to buy this guitar. I believe he bought it off a guy called Snake Hips in Edinburgh. I think that might be right. Um, anyway, so we talked for a while, I th and I think he must have seen that I was, you know, a, 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 a new full-time musician and, you know, maybe struggling a bit and stuff. So he basically knocked me some money. He said, to tell you what, let's do it for this price. So we're, it, it was still, the price he offered was very fair, but he said, let's just do it for this. And I'd be really happy to know it's gone to a good home. And uh, I walked away that day with this guitar, you know, within six months of being a full-time musician, I could not have been happier. Now... At first, I got it home. It had 15 gauge strings and it was this very big wide neck on it. And I w was like, what have I done? I couldn't play it. I was really, really struggling. Anyway, it took a bit of playing, but I got used to it. Now I won't play anything else. Um, but yeah, like this guitar, 
basically buying this guitar meant that all the ragtime and blues I was playing suddenly kind of came to life when I was playing guitar and not double bass, because really I was playing double bass before. When I met Jack, who plays washboard in the resona washboard resonators, I played him some music of like Blind Boy Fuller with the, the washboard and the resonator guitar. And he said, we should do that, that's a great sound. So we started playing together. He got a washboard and then we started playing together. Then we started writing together. And now the vast majority of my income comes from the washboard resonators and from touring around the UK and playing private events. And before COVID, it's COVID as I film this, we've got the COVID thing on, but before COVID, we were doing, well, we were both doing over 200 gigs a year with the washboard resonators and with other bands. So this guitar basically does all those gigs, either Lead City Stompers gigs, my other band, or washboard resonators. I use a different guitar for solo gigs, but uh, this does over 200 gigs a year, or has done for the last 10 years, really. So it's done, you know, probably close to 2,000 gigs. And as I sit here in my house, you know, the mortgage gets paid from playing on this instrument. You'll see it's all worn through the chrome here. Um, you'll also see that it's got a headstock brake. What happened there was I was playing in a care home, a dementia ward, with my guitar resting against a wall and I was tuning my banjo and a little lady came past with a Zimmer frame, knocked it and it broke. Got through the gig, but it was the neck, the headstock was broken. Got it fixed. And then about a year later, I was playing a wedding and some very, very drunk man knocked it over and it fell on a hard floor and snapped clean off. Very upsetting, but I got it repaired again. Uh, it sounds just the same. It doesn't, uh, doesn't bother me that that happened. It's a working instrument. It's more than paid for itself. Mm -hmm. But I, I could do with replacing this white face here. I should really get onto, onto National Resophonic and replace that. But yeah, I love this guitar and it's, it's basically formed the kind of music I play, the kind of touring. It's re completely reliable, never had any issues with it, except for when it got broken by those two people. Um, I love it and it's, it's meant everything. It's just symbolised everything about my life. And um, whatever happens, whatever instruments I play into the future, I will always keep this because mm -hmm. It takes me back to, you know, that time of wanting to be a professional musician. It takes me back to uh, that that drive and determination to make it happen. A reward for making it happen. And then, um, yeah, it must have been about six months after I'd turned as a professional musician. I didn't tell my family because uh, when I talked about being a professional musician before I became one, there was a lot of kind of disparagement about doing that. So... In order to not get discouraged, I decided to uh, not tell people I'd given up the day job. So I left it six months. I bought, so it was when I bought this, and the, the week I bought this, I took this to like my family and I said, I took it into the house, said, look, what do you think to this guitar? And they were like, that's beautiful, that's a beautiful guitar. And I said, right, let me tell you what's happening. I bought this guitar as a treat because I've been a full-time musician now for six months and I had a buffer and the buffer hasn't gone down, the buffer's gone up. So I bought it out of that and explained it. So this guitar was actually the, the, the catalyst for even telling my family what I was up to. Um, so there are so many kind of wonderful memories on this guitar. Bad memories as well, but um, you know, tough times, good times, bad times, lots of songs written uh, and many, 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 many more years ahead on it. I just can't get across how much I love this instrument and how much it's meant to me and how much it's shaped my life. So thank you very much, everybody. I have rattled on something terrible there. We'll do some more of these videos. I've got some pretty cool instruments surrounding me, so we'll look at some of those. Um, if you've enjoyed this, you can help us. Subscribe below. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. You can find us on Spotify and all that. You can go to the website and the shop and you can buy a t-shirt or a CD. It all helps us as professional musicians. Um, keep our heads above the water and it also helps to spread the word. The more you like and comment, the more the internet allows other people to see our, our stuff. So um, thank you very much, everybody, if you've made it this far. <laughs> I barely have. I bore myself sometimes, but there's a lot to get in here and I didn't want to miss anything. Um, so thank you very much and we'll see you all again. Bye bye.